Example 149. This thing is comparing two methods of receiving customers at its city halls in the Magic Kingdom and Disneyland. They are deciding if using one long line used in Disneyland is better than allowing people to line up in separate lines for each teller. That's how they do it in the Magic Kingdom. They collected waiting time data measured in minutes for both locations. So here's the waiting time information. The sample sizes, the sample means, and the standard deviations. Now they want us to test the claim at the 5% significance level that Disneyland City Hall lines have smaller variance than the lines at City Hall and Magic Kingdom. Okay, so when I read the problem, I'm pretty sure it's a hypothesis test, right? Because it says test the claim, and then it says it's a 5% significance level. But you have to be very careful because I see a lot of students in my classes that forget to pay attention to what you're testing the claim for, right? The habit is then to try to compare the means right away, but that's not really what's happening here in this problem, right? They give us sample means, that's true, but the problem doesn't ask us to compare sample means, it asks us to compare the variances. So we're looking at whether one variance is smaller than another. So this is a hypothesis test to compare two population variances. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is to express our claim symbolically. So I'm going to write our claim symbolically. So our claim is pretty straightforward. They're saying to us that the significance level that, or that we want to test the claim that at the 5% significance level that Disneyland City Hall lines have a smaller variance than the ones at Magic Kingdom. So what I'm going to do here is say this. I'm going to say the standard deviation or the variance, if you want to square it, for Magic Kingdom, I'll use MK for Magic Kingdom, that is supposed to be greater than the variance for Disneyland, DL for Disneyland. I hope that makes sense and matches the claim in your eyes, right, that they've given us, right? Because they say that Disneyland City Hall lines have a smaller variance, so Disneyland has a smaller variance than Magic Kingdom. So I think the inequality is proper. You may wonder why I've written it with Magic Kingdom first, since the problem words it with Disneyland first. You may have said, well, couldn't we put Disneyland first? You certainly could, but um, you know, what I want to get you in the habit of doing is to quickly glance in the problem at the uh, standard deviations that are provided to you. If you see that the standard deviation here is, you know, 1.23 and this one's only 0.48, I want you to make the one with a larger standard deviation your first group or your first population that you're taking sample data from. And we're going to do that for a specific reason, which we'll discuss later on. It has to do with getting the critical value for the problem. If we do this, we'll ensure that the test is always a right-tailed test if we make sure that, um, or at least we can run the test as a right-tailed test every time if we make sure that the standard deviation, um, which is larger, becomes our first group in the problem. So I've just, out of habit, done that. Now, it's not to say that putting Disneyland first tier changes anything meaningfully because, you know, the statement is the same no matter which way the Disneyland, um, you know, variance is li listed, whether you list it first or not, as long as you're showing that Magic Kingdom is supposed to be greater than Disneyland, you've done your job. All right, but I want you to get in the habit of putting the one that has the larger sample variance first. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's do HO and HA. Now, I'm looking at HA, or looking at the claim part of me, and I'm seeing that it's HA because of this greater than symbol. So I'm going to go ahead and say that they're the same, which is often the case, but not always the case, but it happens a lot, right? Usually the alternative hypothesis is the claim, but not in every case. Okay, so there's our claim and there's our alternative hypothesis, and then we have the null hypothesis, which is going to express the opposite idea, right? So what's opposite of greater than? Well, it's less than or equal to. Okay, so there are my two hypotheses. I have my claim. Now we get the data. The data is already laid out for us nice and neat, so let's just copy it down. And again, we're going to be consistent. We're going to make the Magic Kingdom group first because we did it that way in our claim, right? So if I do that according to the problem, Magic Kingdom has 61 as the sample size. Its sample mean is 5.15. Its standard deviation is 1.23. Then I'm going to take the Disneyland stuff and say that the end for Disneyland was 41. The sample mean was 5.15. And the standard deviation was 0 0.48. Their sample means are the same. So the, the issue is then is the variance the same? We'll talk about what significance that has at the end of the problem. But for now, we have the data laid out. Now, from there, the next step with the data after the data is to get the test stat. Luckily, the test stat is nice and easy here. 
Our test stat for the test of equal variance is just an F test stat. And it actually, after canceling out some terms and reducing it, the formula boils down to something very simple. It's going to be the variance for the first group divided by the variance for the second group. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Now, the variance, remember, is just the standard deviation squared. So you could actually just do the ratio of the two standard deviations and then square it if you want. This is equivalent. It's the same thing. So either do it this way or this way. Either way, you get the same result. But do not forget to square it if you're given standard deviations in the problem. That's a very common error where people just divide the two standard deviations and they forget to square it. Now, in our case, this 1 and 2 is actually what? Magic Kingdom Disneyland, right? Magic Kingdom Disneyland. The top one, the bigger one, is going to be the Magic Kingdom in this case. Divided by 0 0.48, and then we will, of course, square the results, and let's see what that gives us. Okay, so I put it out here, and I get 1.23 divided by 0.48. And when I do that, I get 2.56, but then I'm going to square the answer, right? So I square it, and I get the answer 6.57, if we just round off, right? Let's actually give three places. So we'll do 6.566. There it is. That's our F test stat. That's our test stat. Now, just like before, we're going to use a critical value approach to finish the problem. So we want to draw a curve and label a critical value on it and a rejection region. So let's draw the curve. What does the F curve look like? Well, it actually is kind of like a skewed bell curve. So it usually has a long skinny tail on one side. So that's kind of what the F distribution looks like. And the rejection region for our procedure, it's going to be a right-tailed test, as you can tell in this case. It's a right-tailed test. So we're going to shade the tail area, right? And then we're going to say that the alpha in that tail is the alpha they provided in the problem. And if you look here, they say that we're using a 5% significance level, right? So I'm going to go ahead and draw a little arrow here and say, hey, the area in this tail is 5%. It's all in one tail because it's a one-tailed procedure, right? One-tailed procedure, all the area in one tail. Now from there, we need to put the critical value right here to figure out where that rejection region begins. Where does it begin? That's our question, right? Well, the start of the F curve is actually at zero. So this is going to be a positive number, right? And it'll get, we'll get it from the table. But our whole question is, is where does that rejection region start, right? To figure that out, we have to go to the table and we're going to look up a special number. The number is the F critical value. So the notation for it is F, just like the F that we use to denote the test stat. And then we're going to have a pair of degrees of freedom. We're going to use the numerator degrees of freedom and then the denominator degrees of freedom. So what we're asking is, if you look at where you got this number from, I got it from the first group, what would be the degrees of freedom if I subtract 1 from the n here? Well, it would be 60, right? 60. And then what would the next degrees of freedom be, the denominator degrees of freedom be? Well, where did I get this number from for the denominator? I got it from here. What's the degrees of freedom then? n minus 1, so it'll be 40. And then lastly, I need the alpha. The alpha is 0 0.05. So I need to go to my table. I need to look up 60, 40, and 0 0.05. And that should give me the critical value I'm looking for. Let's go do that now. OK, so we're at our 0 0.05 f table. And we're looking for 60 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 40 in the denominator. Now, the numerator degrees of freedom on this first page only goes up to 9. So we're going to have to switch to our second page here. And when I do that, I see that we have 60 here in this column. All right, and then we need to go down to where it says 40 on the table. And to do that, so we don't lose track, I'm just going to leave my pen here in the row next to 60. That way, we'll be able to figure out where 60 is when we're done. OK, so let's do that. We'll scroll our table down so we can see 40. And there's 40 in the next to last row. And so when we look in our 40 row, in the 60 column, we see the answer 1.64, 1.64. So we found the answer 1.64 from our table. Now we compare 
our test stat to the critical value and see where this test stat lands on that same number line. And of course it would land way over here because 6.5 is much greater than 1.64. It lands in the tail, that means we reject the null hypothesis. So we say reject HO and therefore support HA. All right, now that we've come to that initial conclusion, we simply ask ourselves, is the claim HO or HA? In this particular problem, it is HA. So we will then say the sample data support the claim. The sample data, the sample data supports the claim. Supports the claim. All right, so what does that mean then in this problem? Well, it means that essentially there's a smaller variance at Disneyland than there is at the Magic Kingdom, where the Magic Kingdom line has greater variation. So remember, Disneyland uses one long line, right? And so basically everyone waits in the long line, and then when the teller becomes open, they go to the teller. That has a smaller variation. So what does that mean in practical terms? How should Disney interpret that? Well, since on average both types of lines produce the same average wait time, then what we want to say is that the smaller standard deviation is better. What that means is that you have a more consistent experience. So when Disneyland, when they say it's about a five minute wait to get you know service at their city hall, they're about right because the standard deviation is quite small. That means there will only be a slight variation around that, maybe you know a minute on either side, maybe somebody might wait six minutes or four minutes, and that's not going to be terrible. Whereas here, the variation is greater, which means you promise them a five minute wait, but it could be as long as seven minutes, or sometimes maybe they get lucky and it's as short as three minutes. You're more concerned with the longer wait line, right? But also, just in terms of planning and organization, it's much easier if you can say how long it's going to take to get these people handled and processed through the line. And for Disneyland, it's going to be easier to make those predictions because the variation is very small, so when they say the average is five minutes, they mean it's five minutes, right? It's pretty close to that, and that's a consistent experience for the, cons for the consumer, the customer, and for the business itself. So in both senses, um, we like that stability. So generally speaking, businesses will want to reduce the variability in their service or in their products because that's a mark of quality. All right, and that's it.